Good evening, City Church family and all of our friends. I'm Pastor Doug Baker welcoming you to our midweek service on this Wednesday evening. Although we are going virtual, uh, I'm glad that you're joining us. I'm glad to be here. I know last week we uh, sat at our desk, but uh, I feel a little bit more comfortable here in the pulpit. And so I just want to join with you wherever you are this evening, uh, in your home or wherever you might be. And I want to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ with you. And I want to speak a blessing over you and pray a blessing over you. And I just want to spend some time encouraging you. Uh, and so before we do that, I want us to open up our time together with prayer tonight. I want us to pray for our nation. I want us to pray for uh, people that are being affected adversely by this, uh, what is being labeled a pandemic. And I want us to pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be spread in these last days. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for who you are and I thank you for all that you do. I thank you, Lord, that your promise through Jesus Christ to us is yes and amen. I thank you, Lord, that your hand is mighty upon us. And, Lord, that you will use us even in these last days. You will use the church. You will glorify your name through the church. So, Father, I pray for our nation. I pray for our world. I pray for our leaders. I pray, Lord Jesus, for uh, those that are struggling and, and those that have lost relatives and family and those that have lost income to this pandemic and coronavirus. Lord, we just pray the healing of the Lord upon this nation and upon this earth. I pray, God, that people would repent and turn back to you and allow you to heal them and allow you to strengthen them. And Father, I pray for godly restoration. I pray for the people of God to be used and to be ministered to and to be ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that evangelism and soul winning would be the order of the day again. I pray your blessing on this time we have together tonight. And I pray, God, that somebody's soul would be stirred and that somebody would be encouraged. Remind us, Lord, that you are still in control. You're the Lord of heaven and earth, and there is nothing too hard for you. I pray your blessing and your anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your scripture, or if you're joining us on the YouVersion app, I want to call your attention to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 and 13 again. Very clearly, the, the scripture speaks to us, and it says, Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame would not be dislocated, but rather be healed. We've been in a, a long series that we're calling Power for the Pandemic. And this scripture, these two scriptures in Hebrews 12, verses 12 and 13, they've been our, our starting point, And they've been what we've been looking at a lot when we talk about making straight paths for our feet at a time when people are weary. At a time when hands are hanging down and, and knees are feeble. At a time where our dislocation seems to hurt maybe more than it did a year ago. I, I want to say to you right now that there is still a straight path that will allow for healing in your life. I want to say to you that our God is still greater than any adversary. And our God is still in control of heaven and earth. And so I want to talk to you again tonight about the straight path. Of productivity. We started speaking about it on Sunday morning, but I want to talk to you again about productivity because I believe that one of the straightest paths to healing is generosity. That may sound crazy to say that we should give even while we are struggling ourselves, but it's not strange. If you look at Proverbs, the 11th chapter, the 24th and 5th verses, the scripture says this There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, and it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. The scripture is true at all times. If you will be gracious, if you will be generous, your life is going to be visited by the increase and the productivity of Almighty God. I love the scriptures that says, there is one who scatters, but yet he increases. There is one who withholds, and it leads to poverty. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, redeemed child of God with royal blood coursing through your veins. It's not time for us to hide away in a closet, terrified that the enemy is going to kill us or the enemy is going to destroy us. It is time for the body of Christ 
to scatter when the world says it doesn't make sense. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians that the foolishness of God is wiser than men. I want to say to the body of Christ, rise up. Be generous. Be a giver. Be productive. Refresh somebody else because they who refresh others will be refreshed themselves. Amen. So we approach giving with these guarantees. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. We read from it. It was our text last week. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not cease. When I look at what the Bible promises and God promises that as long as there is an earth, seed time and harvest is not going to stop. The God who keeps earth in orbit says as long as there is an earth, productivity will come to the sower of good seed. Jesus speaks to us in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured to you again. In the landscape of giving, we operate amid this reality. The harvest is always greater than the seed. The Lord said, it is with the measure that you use. I may give a thimble but God's thimble is greater than mine. I might give a bucket, but God's bucket is bigger than mine. You see, what we need to understand is that the harvest is always greater than the seed. When we look at it from a physical realm, the earthly exchange rate that God initiated is almost gaudy. As a matter of fact, if you look on uh, our, our podcast, or if you found this message by looking under message titles, the subtitle of this message is Acorns and Oak Trees. Because the reality of sowing and reaping on an earthly scale is that the seed, the harvest, is always so much greater than the seed. And my mind went to think about the, 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 the mighty oak tree that at one time was just a little bitty acorn. And I think about the reality that these huge oak trees we see came from little bitty acorns. You see, the earthly exchange rate that God initiated about giving is almost crazy. But yet the heavenly exchange rate is almost uh, incredible. I heard a saying one time that said this, Man can know how many seeds are in an apple, but only God knows how many apples are in a seed. Now, I'm probably, I'm pretty sure that you will not be able to see what I'm holding up in my hand. Between my thumb and my index finger, I have an apple seed. Matter of fact, I asked the staff earlier, I said, I, I need you to get me an apple seed. Because I want to just give you a little something to think about. If you look at this apple seed, if you could see what I'm seeing, it's, it's very small. It's smaller than an eighth of an inch. But yet it came out of an apple that was probably about the size of a baseball. If you take an apple the size of a baseball and you take that seed that's smaller than an eighth of an inch and you sow that seed into good soil, the God of heaven and earth has initiated a plan and a program. That little bitty seed is not just going to produce an apple the size of a baseball, but it's going to produce a tree that is going to grow large. And that tree is going to give hundreds of apples every year. And in those hundreds of apples every year, there are going to be dozens of these seeds. What am I saying? I'm saying, child of God, you need to get your mind off of the problem long enough to get your eyes back on the provider. Our God said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest is not going to stop. What you hold in your hand hand might seem insignificant to you but if you will get God involved in what you hold in your hand your apple seed can become a tree and your tree can bear apples that bear thousands of seeds in the name of Jesus Christ somebody obey God this week make up your mind I'm not going to live in fear I'm not going to live in dread I'm going to step out in the name of Jesus Christ and I'm going to sow some godly seed and he's going to give a godly harvest 
this, there is no doubt, no telling what God can do in the life of somebody who's resigned that he's still in control of the universe. And somebody said, Amen. When I look at this scripture and I hear the Lord say, as long as there is an earth, there's going to be seed time and there's going to be harvest. And I look at this small, what looks to be an insignificant apple seed. I'm reminded man can know how many seeds are in that apple. But only God knows how many apples are in that seed. Somebody hear me? You are holding a miracle in your hand. If you could just get it in the hand of God. When we get involved in heaven's plan for blessing. Heaven gets involved in our sowing of seed. And suddenly it's bigger than anything that an earthly scale could ever even explain. I take you to Luke's gospel, the 13th chapter, the 18th and the 19th verses, where Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It's like a mustard seed, which a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. I talked to you about the apple seed. And I talked to you about the apple tree. But now Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a man that takes the most insignificant seed, the mustard seed, the least of all the seeds. And he sows that seed in his garden and suddenly what was insignificant in the hands of a man has become significant in the soil of the Lord. And not only does that seed become a blessing to the sower, but the Bible says that the birds of the air lodge in its branches. Somebody hear me today. What you hold in your hand today, you might think is insignificant. But what you hold in your hand today will not only be a blessing for you, but it will be a refreshing to somebody else. Other living beings can be refreshed when the church gets back about the business of sowing and reaping again. I speak a blessing over you now I say that God has said He will bless you and make you a blessing We're not waiting on Washington To approve another stimulus We're not waiting on Wall Street To tell us that the Dow has finished At an all time high What we are doing is saying Lord what I have in my hands You gave me And you are Lord of the harvest And I'm going to obey you And I'm going to take what somebody else would say Is insignificant And I'm going to sow it into good soil And you're going to get involved And not only am I going to be blessed But others are going to be refreshed In the name of Jesus Christ When I look at this scripture And I hear Jesus saying That the kingdom of God Is like insignificance That becomes overwhelming The kingdom of God Is when broken people come to God And they leave not only whole but they leave mending broken lives of others. Glory to God. When I look at what the Bible says about sowing and reaping, and I hear what Jesus said about the kingdom of God just being an explosive entity of refreshing in the lives of everyone who will participate, I can't help but go to Matthew 13 and 23. Jesus said, He who receives seed on the good ground It's he who hears the word and understands it. I need somebody not just to hear the word today, but by the Holy Ghost understand it. He who receives a seed on good ground, hears the word and understands it, is he who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Jesus is speaking of the miraculous dynamic of the kingdom of God. And he said that a sower went out to sow. And some seed fell by the wayside. And some seed fell on thorny places. And some seed fell on rocky, stony places. But the seed that fell on good soil. Those are the ones who hear. Those are the ones who understand the seed that fell on good soil. It is easier for that seed to produce a hundredfold than it is for it to produce Thirtyfold, He said it's going to produce a hundredfold and some sixtyfold and some thirtyfold. Jesus said, let me put it to you this way. If you will be obedient, 
And if you will be receptive, and if you will operate not by the world's ideology, but operate by the divine economy of heaven, then you can be visited by the miraculous increase of God. I'm telling somebody, he's God of the pandemic. He's God of every season, of every era, of every year. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will obey him and sow good seed. And a miraculous harvest is on the way. I came to tell somebody that job is not your source. Heaven is your source. I came to remind somebody the government is not your source. Heaven is your source. I came to tell somebody the seed is not the answer. Obedience to God who is the answer will be the miracle that not only you but somebody around you needs to see. When I look at this passage and I hear that seed time and harvest isn't going to stop. And I hear the command to make straight paths for my, for my feet so that what is lame wouldn't be dislocated, but rather it would be healed. And I hear the Lord saying, if I give, I'm going to receive. And I'm reminded the harvest is exponentially bigger than the seed. And I hear the Lord telling me that if I'll receive the word and understand the word, productivity will come to my life. It reminds me of a story that we all know. We call it the feeding of the 5,000. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they all record it. But as a matter of fact, it wasn't the feeding of 5,000. There were 5,000 men there. Many of the men were married. And many of those married men had multiple children. So we believe that there were 20,000 plus people on that countryside listening to Jesus speak that day. As long as that little boy held on to the five loaves and two fish. They were a meal for him. But when that little boy trusted Jesus enough to give him those five loaves and those two fish, then instead of him getting a meal, all of the people there got a miracle. You see, I want to remind somebody that what is meager in your hands can be the miracle that the multitude needs if you will obey and get it in the hands of the master. When I see those 20 some odd thousand people sitting on that hillside in my mind's eye, And I hear the disciples saying, Lord, you got to send them away. You got to send them away. We don't have anything to feed them with. It's very much like we can be sometimes. We look within ourselves, and within ourselves, we're not a miracle worker, but we know the miracle worker. And Jesus said, Well, what do we have here? And somebody said, Well, we got a lad. He's got five loaves and he's got two fish. They were trying to tell the Lord, we don't have enough. This is all we have. But the Lord took that little boy's meal and he blessed it and he broke it and he multiplied it. And that little boy's meal became a miracle for the multitude. I want to tell somebody, you may only have enough for one more meal. But if you'll put it in the hands of God by ministry means, he will give a miracle to the multitude. There's a world around us that is hurting. There's a world around us that is confused. They don't need a church that's just as confused as they are, friend. You're not called to have every answer all the time, but you're called to point every pilgrim to the one who does have every answer all the time. If you'll take what's meager in your hand and put it in the hands of the master, a miracle can come to the multitude that you're looking at right now. I want to tell you that a hungry multitude does not defy the presence of God. A hungry multitude invites the presence of God. My Lord, somebody hear me right now. Stop living in fear. Stop living in dread. Stop living in shame. Be generous again. Minister in the name of Jesus Christ, knowing that they who water others will be watered themselves. I would agree with you if you say that now is a strange time. I would agree with you if you said these are troubled times. These are unsettling times. Somebody might say that it's wrong for me to encourage generosity and productivity at such a time as this. But I would say now is the perfect time to remind people that we are promised productivity if we will obey God and be good stewards of the seed he's put in our hands. Why? Because God never said sowing and reaping worked except for times of hardship. 
He said that seed time and harvest would be around as long as the earth remains. So I want to say to the body of Christ, I want to say to somebody watching me, sowing and reaping works. It works in the life of an unbeliever. It works in the life of a believer. Sowing and reaping works. If you give, it will be given back to you. But I'm not just talking to you about finances. I'm telling somebody that evangelism has got to have a spike in the church again. We can't just sit back in fear while this world goes headlong into judgment. Find somebody and bless them. Find somebody and speak to them. Do something in the name of Jesus Christ that could be a miracle in the multitude around you. When I think about this time that we're living right now, I shared Sunday that I believe Isaiah's words are apropos, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness will cover the face of the deep and gross darkness of people, but my light will be seen upon you. We look around and there's gross darkness on the face of the people. People are so afraid they don't know what to be afraid of next. Why, Pastor? Because the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not the culmination of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom. This nation doesn't fear the Lord. It doesn't even have the beginning of wisdom. But the people who know their God shall be mighty and carry out great exploits. Child of God, hear me now. It's time for us to stand with the whole armor of God. It's time for us to stand with the expectancy of a miraculous God to show up. It's time for us to pray that our eyes would be open, that there are more who are for us than there are against us. It's time for us to put the sickle in the harvest and reap for the time of harvest is now. I hear Jesus in John 4, 35 and 38. Here's what he says. Don't you say that there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Well, preacher, we'll go back to worshiping and we'll go back to serving and we'll go back to giving and we'll get active again when this pandemic has passed. What if the rapture takes place before the pandemic has passed? Are we satisfied with everyone lost, remaining lost for all of eternity? Jesus speaks to his followers. You say that there are four months until the harvest. But I say lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white. Somebody's got to hear me now. Jesus is telling the body of Christ in this time of pandemic that we're guaranteed success. He's telling the body of Christ that if we sow, we will reap. He's showing us naturally and supernaturally that the harvest is always bigger than the seed, praise God. He's showing us that even if we die in this earth, we will live eternally. He's telling us that now, today, is our finest hour of ministry. But then he goes on and he says something in verse 38 that really grabs a hold of me. And here's what he says. I sent you to reap that for which you have not Sowed. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. What I hear the Lord speaking to the body of Christ right now is not only a blessing of the fact that you will sow and you will reap, but the Lord is speaking into my spirit and the Lord is speaking through Scripture these words. I am telling the church to rise up and reap a harvest that they never sowed seed for. I'm telling the church to rise up and reap a harvest that they never even labored for. The Bible tells us in Revelation that there is a golden vial in heaven that is full of the prayers of all the saints and the Lord spills it out as incense. That's right. Prayers that have been prayed that were received by God in heaven have been stored up in a golden bowl up in heaven and he just pours those prayers out as an incense. I'm telling you right now that you're going to come in contact with somebody and you may just think their name is Bill or Tom or Bob or Mark but I'm going to tell you who they are. 
are. They are the great, great grandson of a great, great grandmother who prayed great, great godly prayers and said, Lord, I don't ever want to see one of my descendants lost and I don't ever want to see one of them bound. And the Lord is telling you to lift up your eyes and the Lord is telling you they're not just your co-worker. They are his child and he intends to save them. And somebody prayed a prayer that's been stored up in heaven and being spilled out right now. I speak over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're a child of God. You're a force to be reckoned with. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Rise up by the Spirit of God. Make up your mind. These aren't the worst days. These are the best days for the church to be the church. Now is the time. Today is a day of salvation. We will reap in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We go back to Amos. Amos 9 and 13. And the prophet says the time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can even be harvested. The terraced vineyards on the hill of Israel will drip with sweet wine. We understand that the new wine of the New Testament is the Holy Spirit. The Lord said there's going to be such an overflow of the Holy Spirit because the harvest is going to be perpetually ripe. It is going to be like the the reapers are overtaking the sowers. The Bible is so clear when it says to us, there is a time of ripened harvest. And that time of ripened harvest will be full of Holy Spirit anointing. You couple that with Jesus telling you, don't say the harvest is then or there. Don't say the harvest is later. But say the harvest is here and now. Lift up your eyes. Don't see a pandemic. See an opportunity opportunity for revival lift up your eyes don't see a news media that is liberal and brainwashing America see a moving of the Holy Spirit see an opportunity for righteousness see the reality of God in your life because the reality of God is very simply this a church in revival cannot be stopped A church anointed with the Holy Spirit will be involved in the harvest of God. And they will reap that for which they did not even labor. Somebody else labored. Somebody else prayed. My Lord, I feel the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you you're standing on the shoulders of somebody who came before you. This tradition has been passed down to us by devout men and devout women and it's not time for us to give up now. Don't you give up now. Don't you give up now. You serve God with a determination and make up your mind that you will not give up. In the midst of preaching like this, I'm taking back to Matthew's Gospel, the 16th chapter. Peter has a divine revelation of Jesus Christ and Jesus speaking to him and to us says these words in Matthew chapter 16 verses 18 and 19. On this rock, the revelation that I am Christ, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Somebody's got to say amen. You ought to be shouting right where you are. Jesus said, I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. I'm going to tell you there are times that my little wife breaks charismatic and she begins to go binding and loosing and she begins to bind up a spirit of rebellion and she prayer walks our neighborhood and she binds up a spirit of addiction and she begins to loose the freedom of the Holy Spirit I want to say to the church right now that we must get back with the reality that we are the bride of Christ that we are the anointed of Jesus Christ and that he is building his church on the reality of his lordship and when we look at Matthew 16 I see, number one, that giving is a key. Giving gets me involved. It is a key in the kingdom of heaven. I know that prayer is a key to the kingdom of heaven. But I also know that giving is a key to the kingdom of heaven. 
When we look at Cornelius, and Pastor Jason shared it for the offertory and the devotion Sunday, we look at Cornelius who was a Gentile, and the Bible said, the angel of the Lord said, your prayers and your alms, your giving have come up as a memorial. I want to say to somebody right now, prayers are awesome. Praise is awesome. Witnessing all of these things. Giving is a key to the kingdom of heaven. You can give your way out of doubt and you can give your way out of debt. I had a friend of mine tell me one time, and this may be a little charismatic for some of you, but I don't care. We're in a pandemic. I'm just trying to help somebody who wants to be helped. I had a friend of mine who said to me, We have decided in our home that we're not going to tithe on what we make. We're going to tithe on what we want to make. And we decided that we would do that. And lo and behold, would you know it, that before the year was over, we were making what we were tithing on. I told Pam, I said, Pam, I'm going to tell you what, that sounds good to me. I want us to begin at what, what is it that we need to do to effectively do ministry the way Jesus wants us to do it. And we looked at it and we came up with a budget. We said, this is what we need. So we started tithing, not on what we made. We started tithing on what we needed. You know, giving is a key to the kingdom of heaven. You know what I'm about to tell you. Before that year was over, we were making what we had been tithing on. I'm telling you that giving is a key of heaven. But what else does this scripture teach us he said the gates of hell won't prevail gates are defensive measures friends the church is not called to sit behind the gate on the other side afraid no 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 we are not called to be defensive we are called to be offensive Jesus said I've given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven giving is a key to the kingdom the gates of hell are not going to prevail the devil's not going to be able to stop you pandemic won't be able to stop you bankruptcy of the entire world will not stop a child of the most high God I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ you have the authority and you have the ability and you have the mandate to work for the Lord until he comes so giving is a key to the kingdom gates are defensive measures make up your mind that you're not called to be scared of the devil the devil is really scared of you then when I look at Jesus says whatever you Bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Generosity loosens the blessing on us and others simultaneously. So Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell won't prevail. I gave you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you loose is loosened. So I tell you, giving is a key to victory in your life. It's a key to the kingdom. I tell you that gates are defensive measures. Hell is afraid of you. You stop being afraid of hell. And I tell you that generosity generosity will loosen the blessing of God on this earth. Not only in your life, but the life of somebody else. Why? Because the giver will be rewarded. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. If he sows to his flesh, he will of the flesh reap corruption. But if he sows to the Spirit, he will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for we will reap in due season if we don't lose heart. I want to say to somebody right now, whatever you do, don't give up now. Whatever you do, don't lose heart now. Whatever you do, don't you let the devil or your flesh trick you into hiding in a corner somewhere, afraid to minister in the name of Jesus. I declare to you, don't say the harvest is later, but lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for the harvest is already ripe and ready for harvest. Jesus is sending you not into something that you provided. He's sending you into something that he's provided. Somebody else has prayed over it. Somebody else has prayed and praised and given in the name of Jesus Christ, church of the living God. Hear me, stand up and be counted. Stand up and speak up. It's time for the body of Christ to minister and know that we will never outgive God. Hallelujah. The Lord has said, That his word will not return to him void. The Lord has said as he thought it would happen. And as he purposed it would stand. The Lord said I I will watch over my word to perform it. God has guaranteed us that we cannot fail. I'm going to be honest with you. This next story I'm sharing with you as I close. 
It's a little intimidating because I just preached to you about a little boy's lunch of five loaves and two fish feeding 20 some odd thousand people. But there was something that happened in my life on Sunday and I didn't realize what was happening until it happened. I was preaching on productivity and I was preaching on sowing and reaping and I was preaching on seed time and harvest and I wasn't even thinking about the sermon at the time I was walking out the door and someone came to mind and I thought, I just need to bless that person. And so I said, Pam, do you have a $20 bill? She said, yes. So she gives me a $20 bill. I put it in my pocket, make up my mind. I'm going to bless this person when I see them today. I'm going to just bless them with 20 bucks and say, here, go buy yourself a meal somewhere. Just be blessed. Here, I just want to bless you. Before I got to that person that day, a gentleman came up to me and said, here, I need to give you this. And in an envelope, he had put $100. So what I'm telling you is, on my way to give somebody $20, God had already sent somebody to give me $100. You say, preacher, what are you trying to tell us? I'm trying to tell you that God is wanting us to lift up our eyes and look at the fields for the harvest is now. I'm trying to tell you that you cannot outgive God. You will never outgive God. I'm telling you that when you step out one way, God's going to bless you every way in the name of Jesus. I declare to you that when you purpose in your heart, you're going to be a giver. It may even be before the seed gets in the soil that God shows up and gives you more seed. The blessing of Abraham is resting mightily on the body of Christ. Make up your mind that you're blessed to be a blessing And you're not going to let this last day revival pass you by Rise up child of God and be the warrior heaven has intended you to become You see it may not be as big as feeding 20,000 people But what God did Sunday was remind me who is in charge. And if he wanted the person that I was going, if he wanted that person he put on my heart blessed with $20, and he wanted me blessed with $100, I don't know what else he wants to do. But I know if you'll obey God, miracles, miracles are waiting to be released in your life. So I remind the body of Christ today, we are in a pandemic According to what we are told by the governments and the World Health Organization, and we're wearing masks and we're doing all we can. I'm preaching virtually to you over this internet, but I want to say to you and I want to remind you again that God's in control of the heaven and earth. I want to say He's the Lord. He's a God of all flesh and there is nothing too hard for Him. And I want to say it's time for us to strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight paths for our feet so that what is lame would not be dislocated, but rather be healed. And I want to say to you, one of the straightest paths to healing that I know of is God. Godly, biblical generosity because the soul that waters others will be watered itself. So at this last hour of mankind and I believe the curtain is being drawn and I believe Jesus is soon to return. At this time, let us not just put back riches for lives that we will never live. Let us not prepare for days that we are not promised, but let us make the most of this day when the harvest around us needs somebody to be Jesus in shoe leather. And the harvest around us needs somebody to be Jesus right where they are. You, my friend, are the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And one of the ways we say it is by being generous and by blessing others. Father... I thank you for the reality of sowing and reaping. I thank you, Lord, that as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest is not going to stop. I thank you, Lord, that you promised me if I give, I'd receive. You've shown me naturally and supernaturally the harvest is way bigger than the seed. So, Father, I pray for everybody listening to me right now. Remind us that now is the time of harvest. Remind us that not only are we called to sow, but we've been called to reap that which we didn't even sow. In the name of Jesus, touch somebody's heart and give them courage. Give them a tenacity and a gravel in their spiritual gut to step out and be the man or woman of God that you've called them to be. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Before we leave, I want to speak a blessing over you. I love to do it 
When we're here corporately, I want to do it now. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that you're the people of God. Fair as the moon, clear as the sun, as awesome as an army with banners. I pray the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and make his face to shine upon you. I pray the Lord give you peace, prosperity, productivity every day of your life. Whatever you put your hand to in Jesus' name, may it prosper. May you go in peace and return in joy, bringing his increase with you. I speak it and pray it in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And the people of God, wherever you are, said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful night. We are thrilled that you joined us here at City Church, and we want you to stay in touch with us. There's several ways that you can do that. You can message us through the City Church Gaston Facebook, or you can go to citychurchrbc.com forward slash connect and fill out a connection card. Another way is you can text us at 256-459-8310. Text us and let us know, hey, I got saved, or God's doing a work in my life, or I need help, I need prayer. Let us know what's going on in your life. Great things are happening here at City Church, and we are thrilled to have you here with us. God bless, and have a great day.